this is in the chamber with the Ark of the Covenant. Uh -huh. All right, we broke our way in through uh, a hole. Uh, we went 60 feet underground. We came back up. On January 6th, 1982, at 2 o'clock in the afternoon, I broke into a chamber beneath the Calvary Escarpment, north of the city wall of Jerusalem. In that chamber is the Ark of the Covenant. Markland. And I'm Martha Markland. We're glad you joined us tonight. We've got a very interesting program lined up for you. Back, uh, oh, I guess it was, what, two weeks ago, Martha? Yeah, exactly. We had uh, Ron White with us, and we talked about Noah's Ark. And uh, just a few days after that, uh, I saw in the Tennessee, and of course, uh, there was also an article in the banner, too, yep. about Ron and what he's uh, been doing. Explorer Ron White, they call him in the uh, Tennessee. And, um, we call him Indy around here. Indy. Indy. <laughs> Indiana White is what we call him. No, 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 no. He'll get mad at us here. But anyway, he is, Ron is here with us tonight, and yeah. we're going to be talking about the Ark. And um, he brought along a painting, too, you know, um, that, that he painted. Uh, last time we talked about, uh, uh, we recapped pretty much his whole uh, search for the Ark. And there's a picture right there uh, that he painted the Ark, Noah's Ark. And we're going to be talking about two arcs tonight. You know, we're going to recap a little bit on Noah's Ark here. We're going to talk a little bit about that. But uh, then we're also going to talk about the Ark of the Covenant, which is a completely mm. different arc. There weren't uh, two of each kind of animal in the Ark of the Covenant, no. but there was, you know, the power of God in that ark. Yes. And uh, we're going to be talking about that. He's got some very interesting things and some um, some things that he's going to share tonight. That's going to be major worldwide news uh, before too long. And, you know, we're doing the format differently, too, because we're not going to have as, as many songs. We're only going to have a couple songs, so we'll have plenty of room to cover, time to cover all this and uh, talk about all these details. Yes, uh, Celeste Clydesdale will be singing uh, in the program a couple of songs we know you'll be blessed with. But yeah. right now, let's welcome Ron White. Ron? Hi, Ron. Welcome back Hi, to Maranatha. Dean. Thanks. Good to be here again, Martha. Hi. I, um, I brought this article. I clipped it out of the Tennessee and uh, I guess the, the last time you were here, you, you, you covered pretty much the material in here. But the article, let's see if we can get a shot of it, maybe on uh, camera two. Explore plans, new trip to get Noah's Ark. Here we go. Da, da, da. Ray Waddell wrote that article. And then there was also an article in the Tennessee and we, we've seen some things on the local news shows and so forth. Yeah. But um, the last, uh, the last few weeks, really. Yeah, well, since he's been on the show, he's been a lot about it. Well, you know, he's he's done a thing. It's going to be in, what, 2020, I believe, what, next week? Or? Uh, next Thursday, if everything stays on schedule. Thursday, of the well, that's, we'll just say the date is October the October the 10th. Uh, at different parts of the week when this airs, it might be the day before or the day of yeah. when they see this. But yeah. uh, they're, they're doing a program that's tentative scheduled for there. And they're going to talk about your, your search. And uh, was there anything that in talking about you know how you found uh, what got you interested in the ark Noah's ark and in your your uh, travels and research and everything was there anything that we left off last time that uh, you want to get you, you want to say about that uh, I think we probably covered it pretty thoroughly Gene but again the whole object behind this <coughs> I believe that God has preserved some attention getters mm -hmm. from Old Testament times and these will be brought out uh, and everybody's attention will be gotten. Uh, God does know how to accomplish His purpose. Not only that, He will, you know, He will accomplish it. And this will be and so uh, dramatic that uh, no one will be able to, not, to deny it. Well, uh, at the outset, uh, everybody will be persuaded, but there's a phenomenon among human beings that we, uh, if we don't like a certain truth, then our mind starts to rationalize that truth away and to water it down, and we can actually arrive at a point in time uh, later by this rationalization process where mm -hmm. we deny uh, what we actually, you know, were convinced of shortly before. Yeah. And uh, according to the Bible, uh, there will be a few saved, very similar to what happened at the time of the flood, but th there are indications that there'll be more than eight, of course. Mm -hmm. But although everybody will be convinced at one point by this, these things and the stories that go with them, and I believe that God will reveal his power like he did through the 
uh, disciples and the apostles, and uh, it will be a little more noticeable as the power of God than restoring the sense of smell, perhaps, and some of these things that we uh, <laughs> watch these days, although well, you, smell is important. I'm not yeah. downgrading uh, that. But, you know, I was going to say, um, uh, some certain Christian people, they may say, well, I have faith in the Word of God. I don't need any physical evidence, and what good is this, you know? And uh, what yep. would you say to a person that says that? Well, it's a lot easier to say when you're sitting in your house or in church than it is if somebody has a gun pointed at the end of your nose mm -hmm. and you know that if you say, yes, I believe in Christ or whatever, they're going to mm -hmm. pull the trigger. It takes just a little more faith under that circumstance. And only God really knows how much faith each individual needs. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, people crack under different amounts of stress. Mm -hmm. uh, like, for example, in the interrogations during Second World War, uh, the Korean conflict in, in, in Vietnam. Some people <coughs> uh, cracked under this pressure. They didn't have the tolerance. And other people could uh, tolerate the splinters driven under their fingernails mm. and just all kinds of hideous things mm. and just maintain their silence. But we don't know that, uh, you know, and so, but God does. And so if we say, Lord, fit me for what's ahead and what you want to use me for, He'll get the job done. It may not be real pleasant, uh, but he will get the job done. Well, they're, they're placed in the world right now where people have to, um, are, are, you know, asked to deny their faith and, and through great adversity, That's, they that suffer is correct. for the name of Christ, yes. even right now. Right. And uh, say, for example, in Iran, if uh, you are not a Muslim, oh, yeah. uh, uh, or if you're a minority mm -hmm. uh, Muslim sect or something, uh, They'll kill you. Oh, yeah. I mean, very, you know, they try to exterminate the, what is it, the Baha'is? Uh, yeah, they're, they're, different, attempting they're to, different sects. We read about that in the paper all the right. time. Right. And so Christians are so called, not necessarily Christians, but people that claim to be disciples or followers of God do the most hideous things to their fellow mm -hmm. man mm -hmm. that can be imaginable, mm -hmm. much worse than somebody who doesn't claim to be a Christian. And by the way, Hitler claimed to be a Christian. Oh, yeah. There's probably not too many people know that. But, yeah. uh, well, the Jewish people know that. Yes. The Jewish uh -huh. people tell you that. You know, that's one of the big, um, you know, that drove a big wall between a lot well, of That could really be a turnoff, couldn't it? Jewish mm -hmm. people and the Christian people. Right. Well, isn't that really the reason you got into exploring and finding relics and things like that? Because you wanted tangible uh, things that people could have faith in and know that God's word was true. Right. Uh, you, you look out in the world today, we have a good life, basically. Uh, none of us here have missed too many meals. I haven't. I haven't. And, you know, <laughs> and we have it good. But in this earth, there are people that are starving to death. And oh, you yeah. fly plane loads of food in there to feed these people. The government or the mayor or somebody gets all of this up, carts it off and sells it to somebody and sticks the money in his pocket. And so the money that's collected to actually help these people, very little real help gets to these people. Yeah, I've heard a lot of stories about that, it not getting to them and right. Christian missionaries' uh, trucks being blown up and, and different things. But, you know, when, when, you, when you look at all of that, you, know, you see the world is in a, in a traumatic state. And I guess we're right. going to come to the point where it's going to take something like this to make the everyday, I guess, agnostic, so to speak, person that's not of faith to shake them to say, hey, there is a God. I want to know about this, right. you know, and some of these things are going are to happen. Now, uh, Noah's Ark that uh, we've been talking about uh, the last few shows and, and, and w which will be a subject of um, you know, 2020 coming up and, right. and so forth. I mean, that seems to me to be, I mean, that goes right back to the beginning of the Bible. Right. And that's the basis of a lot of our beliefs. I mean, mm -hmm. that right there, you know, if that is proven to be, you know, Noah's Ark, the right. one Ark, well, then, from that on, that's the thing that, you know, yeah. how could someone deny that? I know some people will, but I know it will strengthen a lot of people's faith. That's right. With this and the chariots and the Red Sea, the giants, remains of giants, the real Mount Sinai with the altar that uh, Moses set up, the 12 pillars of stone, the Ark of the Covenant, all of these things, people are, they're going to be hard put to look the other way uh, from all of this. Now, let me ask and, you something. You just said a mouthful there. You know, Noah's Ark, chariots, 
in the Red Sea that, that proved that the Red Sea was part of the right. Egyptians were killed. Right. And you talked about the, uh, the, uh, the, the place where they worshipped in the wilderness, the stones, right. the twelve stones. And that place, uh, it, it has fallen down. Some of the stones have fallen down, but that altar is sitting there. I mean, just in perfect position. And the twelve pillars are, of stone are sitting there. And the Ark um, of the Covenant, all these right. things. Now, why is it Someone might be saying, now, how does he know all this? How, what is it that has enabled you to be the one, the person who is involved in all these different projects? It seems to me just one of them would be the find of a lifetime. Yeah, but, when I started uh, the Noah's Ark, you know, that was the end of my imagination and aspirations. Mm -hmm. But I began to, like I said a minute ago, something needs to be done here. And I pray to God every day. Say, Lord, please make a quick end to what Satan is doing to your creatures on this planet. You know, and this was the burden that I took to the Lord and asked him, what is there that I could do that will be effective? And I was impressed to go look for Noah's Ark, but I was impressed to get the story straight first. Nobody is going to get these things out without the story is straight. Mm -hmm. God didn't preserve them. To have somebody come along and grab it out and tell the wrong story that is not going to happen uh -huh. and so uh, as to why I've gotten to do this I must have been the only one that volunteered because probably <laughs> I'm the least qualified person that you could think of and he does say that he'll use the simple to confound the wise now I'm hoping that the term simple there means uneducated in the sciences, <laughs> but it may, it may just mean simple <laughs> in the well, full sense of the word. Now you, you, at the beginning, and I guess even now, you finance your own trips. You know, the whole thing is, is something that you do on your own. We've had uh, some help. This last trip, uh, we uh, some people out in California, uh, a lawyer out there, <coughs> uh, Tom Anderson, uh, he put a bundle of money in and, uh, I mean, rendered a service that was just fantastic. Mm. Now, I spent some money on the trip, too, of course. I, I pay my way pretty much, uh, so I'm not obligated to people. Right, well, I know you always have. I mean, you've always paid yeah, your way over this, there. Yeah, but this is actually the first time we've had some real financial aid. Before that, it's been out of my pocket. I don't know if you've ever had uh, this kind of a nightmare or a dream where, where there's something after you and you're trying to run and get away yeah. and you're slow motion you just cannot get up enough yeah. speed to get out of the situation I think everybody's but had that one time or another this time. is the way these projects have seemed to me mm -hmm. but if you look back I've just been working on these actively uh, I've studied on the, some of this stuff for longer but since 1977 and, and I have been to Noah's Ark several times. We have seen and filmed the chariot parts in the Red Sea. We have seen and filmed the real Mount Sinai. We have uh, built working models of the, of the machines that built the pyramid, put them up on the pyramid and demonstrated how they work. We have taken pictures through a hole into a cave where there's remains of giants. And we've been in the chamber with the Ark of the Covenant, all of that in that length of time. So, you know, when I think of it from that point of view, it's ridiculous to feel that I'm marking time or I'm going slow motion. But still yet, huh. I, I'm just so anxious to get all of this out, you know, so people can uh, see it and appreciate it. Okay, now we're going to, we got some slides. You brought a lot of slides tonight to sort of help illustrate um, some of the things we're talking about. And bef But before we go into the Ark of the Covenant, I believe you have... Uh, a slide of one of the sea anchors yes uh, right that that helped navigate and stabilize the Noah's Ark right absolutely okay. we, we have that and uh, what we're trying to do is create a link here between Noah's Ark and uh, Christ okay maybe we can and I, I think this might do it <clears throat> that first slide the first slide of the uh, sea anchor how tall were how tall were those anchors uh, these anchors uh, there's different sizes but uh, this is 10 foot tall and we, six foot wide and 18 inches to two and a half inches. Uh, is it up I mean, against it? Yeah, it's okay. up. Okay. 
Yeah, two feet to 18 okay. inches thick. So you're looking at uh, 10 tons, if you figure this like you would wet cement. This uh -huh. is a massive stone, and it's a material that does not occur in that area mm -hmm. otherwise. All right, now the thought, we're told that Christ is our anchor within the veil. Now, I was doing some experimenting with a model of Noah's Ark, uh, and this painting that we did shows the uh, anchors in place, mm -hmm. some of them. But the, the little model would just swirl around in the eddies of the water, and it would turn sideways in the waves, mm -hmm. and, and mm -hmm. just it was really a rough trip. But these anchors stabilized it. All right, we have a mediator with God that is right in front of God, sitting on the throne with him, and he cares about us, identifies with our problems and everything. And so instead of being cast about by every wind of strife, as the Bible mm -hmm. you know, says, if we follow Christ, if we stick close to him, our voyage through this life will be much smoother. And so uh, what we're going to see tonight, uh, Gene and Martha, are some slides that we took working on the Ark of the Covenant. Now, I believe that that will be the last of these big things that God has reserved to get people's attention. I think this will be the last thing that's brought out before probation is closed. And Christ says, he that is filthy, let him be filthy still, and he that is righteous, let him be righteous still. And behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me. Yeah. But uh, we will share this tonight. We're not going to tell anybody exactly where it is. Now, they say that you should tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, okay? <laughs> Tonight, we're going to go for two out of the three. <laughs> we're, we're not going to tell the whole truth because uh, I believe that I'm positive that this ark is guarded by God's angels. Mm -hmm. And if somebody goes in there and in an unauthorized uh, uh, method attempts to steal this ark, there were 50,000 people killed by bothering this ark I was in a way say, they were you know, not supposed to. When you talk mm. about the whole truth, of course, what you mean is you're going to, we're, we're not going to give the exact precise That's location. right. We're what I say is location. true, but I'm not going to tell you, uh, you know, exactly which chamber this is in tonight. Well, let's get, before we um, uh, get into the slides, actually, let's just give a little background on, on the ark itself. Um, what was the ark used for? All right. Uh, God wrote the law on two tables of stone. Ten Commandments, we know. Right. Okay. The Ten Commandments with his own finger. All right. Uh, he heard the Israelites down there worshiping the golden calf. So he mm -hmm. sent Moses down and says, your people have. You know, uh, mm -hmm. it's like when a kid misbehaves, they become the other parents <laughs> <laughs> kid all of a sudden. <laughs> but he went down and out of anger at their rebellion against God and so quickly after he had divided the sea and all this, to worship these idols, he threw this stone down, uh, these stones, and broke it. All right, so God said, bring another set up, and I'll write those on there again. All right, he instructed Moses to, write, uh, to build a box of shittim wood, a uh, real hard wood that's available in the desert out there, mm -hmm. four and a half feet long, uh, two and a half feet high, and two and a half feet thick, and mm -hmm line it with gold inside and out, overlay it. Overlay with gold. Right, and set a mercy seat on top of it. This was a massive chunk of gold that was molded, and it had uh, cherubims on it, representing the throne of God. Cherubims, they sort of look like angels, I guess, right? Yes, they are angels, <clears throat> that's right, with the two wings. The seraphim have six, but that's six, another okay. discussion. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. But anyway, this law on these tables of stone was kept in there, and then later Aaron's pot of uh, rod that budded when they were trying to kick him out as high priest and get the job themselves, Korah, Dathan, and Abarim. And then the golden pot of manna. But those are not in there anymore. The only thing that is in the ark at this time is the tables of stone. Mm. The other two are not there. Okay, now, I, I was mm. curious about one thing. If the gold, if the wood was overlaid with gold, what would be left of it now? Would the wood have rotted away? Would it just be a gold shell? Or would the wood sustain... Uh, what, decay. Three, four thousand years? How, how, how long has this been? Uh, it was about 1450 B.C. Four, so about 3,600 years yeah, ago. Yeah, 35, 3,600 uh -huh. years. Uh, probably the, you need oxygen mm -hmm. for something to deteriorate away. 
and uh, it may be in a remarkable state of pr uh, preservation. Okay. It depends on other factors, but it could be in good shape. So when they put this, put all these artifacts in there, in, in the ark, it was carried. Now, I, I remember that from right. Sunday school. Everybody knows yeah. that. It was carried ahead of the army of Israel right. when they went to battle. Uh, yeah. against insurmountable odds, you know, like 100 to 1, some of these battles, and they had this ark, and, the, and literally the power of God came out of this ark and slew the other armies. And uh, Yeah, there was a fear of God also that made them kill each other. Uh, like when the Midianites, uh, during the time of Hezekiah, these people killed each other. God terrified them. Mm. And, mm. and so... Uh, what well, other people had the right. ark. But Hophni and Phinehas, the sons of Eli, they were such sinners that when they carried this ark out into battle, God allowed them to be killed by the Philistines and the ark to be captured. Mm -hmm. So it's not a magic box as such. Right. It's uh, a tool that God uses. He uses it. But if we don't have our connection with God, then he doesn't Better stay use away. it for <laughs> our good. Yeah. Right now we're back with Ron Wyatt. Now, Ron, before we went to that song we were talking about, uh, the Ark of the Covenant, we described basically what the Ark of the Covenant was, and, I, and there's a lot more to the Ark of the Covenant. We just sort of touched on a little bit of the history of the Ark of the Covenant. Right. But basically, uh, it right now has the Ten Commandments in it that God himself wrote in stone the second time. That's, that's correct. Now, uh, let me ask you this. Before we get start showing the, the slides, uh, what, okay, what got you interested in looking for the Ark of the Covenant? Well, I had a, a very unusual experience, and in these slides here, we'll get to the the thing that I walked past and my mouth said to me and the owner of the property that is Jeremiah's grotto and the Ark of the Covenant is in there. That's the first I, I mean my mind didn't tell my mouth to say that. I know that sounds weird but that's what happened. Well, what, and, what and the was guy your... immediately said well we will give you permission to excavate uh -huh. you know, and that was when I decided to do it. Okay, This is in Jerusalem? This is outside the wall of Jerusalem, yes. Okay, now what was Jeremiah's grotto? Well, Jeremiah's grotto was a place that he lived, a little cavern-like place or a cave dwelling, and he lived in there, uh, more or less so he could be alone with God. And, you know, uh, like today, if you want to do some real good, serious thinking, leave your ghetto blaster someplace else yeah. because it is impossible to do any good constructive thinking with this music or noise Outside that's booming in your ears. Right. And, and this place is in existence today, the cave where Jeremiah... Uh, the Ark of the Covenant is in it. Now, okay. it's not recognized as Jeremiah's grotto. No, it's it? not. As a matter of fact, it's... Okay, uh, that's what I was getting yeah. at. I was just imagining tour buses going by and Israeli <laughs> guide saying, oh, that's Jeremiah's grotto. But you, oh, right. you just figured that's what it was. Now, in relation to, in re, in relation to the, the city, the old city of Jerusalem with the wall, where, where the wailing wall is still there, but yep. the, the, the wall. Uh, All right, where it, it's is on it? the north side. On the it's north side. But how north far? Side. Well, uh, people that are familiar with the Calvary Scarp, mm -hmm. it's in that scarp. Okay. So it's in, it's in Mount Calvary then. You got it. Yes. So basically, then where Jesus was crucified, that's right. The Ark of the Covenant is is there. Is there right? And the, like we mentioned just a minute ago, there's a story that goes with each thing. And this one with the Ark of the Covenant, I mean, every time I discuss it, I get goose flesh. I mean, it is just a real mind boggler. Now, what I'd like to do here is go through the first uh, few of these slides, and we'll just kind of comment as they go through them slowly. Okay. This uh, is a tomb here cut out in the face of the Calvary scarp. I see. All right, now then, there's two references in the Bible that say the stone that blocked the door on that was a very great stone. We had the privilege of finding the inch and a half iron shaft that the Roman soldiers drove in on the left side of that massive stone. It was rolled in the trough so it couldn't fall out this uh -huh. way. It hit up against a catch flange so it couldn't be rolled to the right. Uh -huh. They drove this in. I guess they chiseled out a hole first and then pounded this thing in so it couldn't be rolled anywhere. Uh -huh. right? Herod said, make it as fast as you can, and they did it. But when Gabriel came down to open that grave, uh, he just sheared that thing off in that iron shaft is uh -huh. right in the wall of that uh, 
sepulcher, the outside so wall So that's the sepulcher where Jesus was that is buried the and raised. That's right. 13 feet, 2 inches, that wow. grave, uh, that stone was in diameter. I have seen nothing even close to that. Pilots, uh, or rather Herod, King Herod's, his was something like uh, 5 feet in diameter. Mm. So when it says it was a great or a very great stone, it wasn't exaggerated. Is this stone still there? Uh, the no, there? this uh, somebody thought that would be a very handy uh, quarry, and so they busted it up like a lot of other things and put it. But the track is still there. The and track and is the there, and the catch branch is there, bar and there. the iron bar, bar is there. It's sheared off flush, and the people that have been there for years and years and years had never noticed that, and we I were fortunate it. enough to have that call to our attention. And uh, this, uh, this is not a brag, Gene and Martha, it's not. Uh, I am thrilled beyond anything I could possibly convey to anybody to be working with these things. Mm -hmm. All right. mm -hmm. And so to see that was a, just a thrill Real blessing. in all of these things. I mean, so I'm, you just I'm pointed it out to them. Bumps. I mean, really. <laughs> I you mean, pointed it out to the villagers, the people who I, live there. I pointed it out to the people that work there uh, this is in the garden tomb, by the way, and they were just thrilled to death with it, some of them. Others were a little afraid because there's a competition between them and the Holy Sepulchre, the Church of the Holy Sepulchre, and they try for political reasons to not sound too positive about this being the right spot. I but I think those things are going to go away soon. We've got to be positive about these Absolutely. things. Absolutely. Okay, sorry there. Uh, if you go on through the slides, now, to the left of the screen, you'll see the two eye sockets-like uh, configurations yeah. in the nose uh -huh. there. This is what's known as the Hill of the Skull, or mm. Golgotha. And mm. looking at this from any angle, uh, from 180 80 degrees, from this side, from this side, anywhere along there, you see a skull. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. Hmm. And we did some hardness tests on this. You know, diamond is tin, and things mm -hmm. get a little softer as you go back. And the the framework of that is an eight. So this thing has been there for since Christ's time. Mm -hmm. uh, there was some discussion on that. But this is at the other end of the garden, and this is the area that Christ died near the scarp. Okay. So this is a place where Jesus was crucified, and then yes. they buried him just around the other side of the hill there. Yes, it said uh, there was a tomb in the garden, mm -hmm. and you know, right and close was a garden, and in the tomb, uh, in the garden was a tomb. Mm -hmm. All right, now if we can go on again, and right inside there is where the ark is. Ark of the uh, it's in that scarp. Now okay. the garden, they excavated this, and this is a wine press dating back to the time that Christ was there. Mm -hmm. They found coins here uh, with the face of Tiberius and these people stamped on them. Wow. So this was open to the public mm -hmm. uh, at the time of Christ. Okay. Now is that on the outside mm. or the inside? This is in the garden. In the garden, it, yes. I see. Okay. And people that have been there will recognize this. All right. All right. Next. We want to just, all right, now this is the tomb itself here and there's one remarkable thing about this tomb. Uh, it's empty. <laughs> you know, and this has been pointed out a lot of times, okay, so we won't dwell on this too much, but I guarantee you that is a fantastic thing. Mm -hmm. Well, you're tomb, speaking you're speaking in relation to the fact that nobody else has used it as a tomb. Well, it's been used as a tomb. Has it? Okay. Right. Well, we know but, that Jesus rose from that tomb. Right. That, that's the point right there. Okay. Later on, we'll show one that isn't. Uh, but all of the other people you can think of, including Muhammad, in mm -hmm. spite of some of the legends is in a tomb. He's still in the tomb, yeah. Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah. Now, this is the mouth of the little grotto that the Ark of the Covenant is in as I saw it before we started the excavation. Mm -hmm. It was used as a dump. Oh, my goodness. And uh, we won't go into details, but it was a grubby place. Well, I imagine. Thanks. Okay. Now, we excavated in here, and when you're working underground and in tunnels, you have to modify your tools, so you'll notice the shovel handle's a little short there. Uh -huh. And now we'll just proceed right on through a quick series of slides 
to give you the feel of being inside a dig. And this is my son here, my youngest son. And this is my older son. Long hair was in style back in the early 80s. <laughs> <laughs> and this is one of the holes from, now we can stop here for just a second. When we were working in there, we found these cutouts that you'll see later where Jesus of Nazareth, King of the Jews, was posted in the three languages. We'll mm -hmm. show you that tonight. Uh, okay. We even had it printed up in those languages and put there. But the, the holes or the places they were put are the ones that were there originally. Right down below these cutouts is a cross hole. Uh, 13 inches by 14 inches by 23 and a half inches deep. Behind it, I found a coin with Tiberius's face stamped on it. Okay. Oh, wow. The emperor from 14 to 37 AD. All right. When I got there, I said, Lord, which way do I dig now? And that's the way I dig. I guarantee you smart people can do it other ways, but I can't <laughs> because I don't have the money to stay out there, you know, and also, and so I was impressed to break through the wall and to show how smart I am, after God is showing me a lot of things that he has, I wouldn't even break through the wall. I said, that's ridiculous. Mm. You know, oh, a man. smart person would have said, okay, great. You know, so far you've been exactly right, and it went to work on the wall. A week later, I told my, other, my older son, I said, every time I pray about where to dig, I get impressed to break through the wall. He said, well, let's do it. We broke through the wall, and there was the, the cave. Mm. Mm. I could have been in there a week ahead of time if I'd have just brought it, uh, mentioned it to that, my older son. <laughs> I told my younger son, and he said do it, but you know how it is with younger son. <laughs> <laughs> they don't get no respect either. So you were in, okay, let me get, see if I get this right now. You were in some of the caves. I guess they just sort of go through, honeycomb through that hill. Yeah, inside. we were outside the cliff, right down the face in a tunnel that we okay. went in. So then one of the tunnel walls is where was God the, the scarp, right. showed you to break, break through. through the thing, right behind okay. the cross hole. Okay. Now, I figured that when I found the cave that there would set the Ark of the Covenant. Okay. Now, if we can continue our little journey through the cave here. Uh, now, this is looking into part of the cave. Uh -huh. And just move right along because we won't be able to cover it if we okay. uh, don't. As you can see, it's very dark down in there. Uh -huh. uh, some of the tunnels were around. Uh, just keep rolling on the slides, please. All right, this is uh, we're, what we're doing. Just imagine yourself crawling through this uh, system of caves and tunnels and this sort of thing. Uh, one of my helpers at the bottom of a hole there. Uh, looks like I've lost my head in this uh, <laughs> slide, but uh, that is me working there. Now we used a metal detector. Uh, we use all of the electronic equipment we can get. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, we pray about it, but we also use the electronic equipment. God gave us these things to use, and when we can't use those to find out what we need to know, then we ask Him. But if we don't use them first, uh, you know, we really hadn't done our best, I don't think. Yeah. And so here we are, still working our way through the cave. Now this took 11 trips in a, a period of about three years. Hmm. We yeah. actually found the Ark of the Covenant on the 6th of January, two o'clock in the afternoon. Uh, and I was broke $300 behind in my hotel bill, which an Arab gentleman gave me $300 and he didn't even know I was broke. My uh, goodness. Uh, uh, another. What old, year was um, this, 83, 82? Uh, 82, 1982, yeah. All right, we're still in the tunnel here, moving along, and if uh, some of these you just squirm down through. Now, uh, my sons being there, they are smaller than I am, and so they got to be the trailblazers <laughs> through a lot of these. Tie a rope around them and throw them down yeah. the hole. We didn't <laughs> see any snakes or anything. We did see some stinging <laughs> worms, and uh, now this is uh, down in the hole again here. They didn't see any snakes, huh? Yeah. <laughs> no, we didn't. Uh, spiders, yes. Okay, just uh, this is a little tour through the cave, and we'll just keep rolling until we get in the chamber here. And it took three years. That's right. Uh, we didn't work solidly. We uh, well, as you came can, and went yeah. as we could afford it. That's correct. 
And we kept a very low profile, which kept the Israeli government quite happy. Yeah. And, uh, you know, everybody happy. Mm -hmm. uh, we were happy to be able to work. We had, of course, ex we were expecting to find it every day. Mm. Now, that, that's another indication on my part of a lack of intelligence. Most people would give up, but every day I thought this is going to be the day. All right, now that uh, big shaft there, we could tell you some things about that, but if we did, you know right where the Ark of the Covenant is. But all of these are places that we crawl through several times. All right, now if you'll hold right there, this is in the chamber with the Ark of the Covenant. Uh -huh. All right, we broke our way in through uh, a hole. Uh, we went 60 feet underground, we came back up. I mean, it was a real labyrinth, uh, mm. and that's not pronounced right, but anyway. Uh, <laughs> but once you got in this chamber, there sat a door right at the end of the chamber. Hmm. And the people that brought this thing in busted a chunk of stone loose, dug out from behind it, laid it down, cut a doorway out in there, carried this stuff in, and there's a lot more stuff in there than the Ark of the Covenant. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's some other goodies. But that's the most important item in there. And then they covered them with animal skins, and then they covered them with wooden boards, and then stones. They packed that thing full of stones, backed out and shoved that chunk of rock back in place and filled in behind it. And today, from the outside, it just looks like a crack that an earthquake made, and there's a lot of those in that scarf. Uh. And so anyway, the thing is very easily accessible, but it certainly wasn't the way we went. I see. But I see. Well, next time you go, will you take the easy route? Are you going to use the door? Uh, we hope to, <laughs> to come in by the door and not be thieves and robbers or, you know, by going in <laughs> another the back way. Door. Yeah. Okay, now let me... You can't get it out. Let me ask you a question here now yeah. that... The ark is in there. Did you? Is it uh, just sitting there in the open, or it's in a stone box? It's in a stone box. Right. Did you open the stone box? Uh, we took a look at what was in there, and uh, and we aren't dead. <laughs> but I'm not saying that in a boastful manner. See, God uh, will use people, uh, you know, and that's an honor to us. And I'm not the only person that could look at the ark, and I'm not going to be the only person that does. Okay, I know this. But if he wants you to see something and you do this in a respectful manner, then he's not going to kill you. He's not going to help you find the thing and then kill you. Well, you know, most so everybody anyway, in, the, in yeah. the nation, probably around the world, is, is a lot of people have seen that movie, you know, with Indiana Jones, right. Finding the Ark of the Covenant, and when yeah. they open it up, you know, just chaos breaks loose and everybody looking on it yeah. is disintegrated. and. You know, very much the way it happened in Bible days, you know, when they carried the ark in battle, right. so to speak. 50,000 people in one afternoon were killed because that they is awesome. showed disrespect to that ark. That's that awesome. little cluster of actors that were playing the part of German soldiers was a drop in no, the bucket. bucket. Right. Still, I would, I'd be very careful peeking in there myself. So you, well, so you, you have lifted the, lifted you the lifted stone, stone and looked in. There, there are other ways of uh, looking in. Oh, okay. I, I use all of the electronic and uh, optical equipment, things that I can afford, we use. Okay. okay. What else was in there? Uh, in the chamber? In the chamber. Uh, the altar of burnt offerings, what's left of the old sanctuary that they carried around out in the wilderness, uh, the table of showbread, mm -hmm. and the candlesticks. Mm. And there's some other gold furniture in there. And I'm, you know. Uh, How about David's sword? I, we registered iron in there, okay. And I think that his sword's in there, but I, I won't, I swear to that. So when you when you say mm. registered, you mean uh, with your metal detectors? Yeah, uh, modern metal detectors have a little dial there, and you dial gold, and you can oh. pick up gold, and I you see. dial iron, and you can pick that up. Uh, you can. Uh, dial up these little tabs, cold drink tabs, and you pick them up, and you can null these things out too. Mm. So that's amazing. Things are easier than they used well, did, to. Was everything? We're getting ready to go to a song here. Was everything covered? Still, I mean, covered with the boards and everything, uh, and rocks and all. Yes, uh, there had been a lot of decay and like this, and apparently there had been enough earthquakes that uh, the stones were shaken down approximately 18 inches, an average of that. The top of the cave wasn't smooth, but.
Mm -hmm. Anyway, uh, the stuff is in there, and I guarantee you when I left out of there, it was covered back up very carefully. Oh, I, <laughs> yes. I want to talk some more about mm. this in just a moment. Um, we're back now with Ron yeah, White. this is exciting. Oh, this is. It very, is. Very, very exciting. You know, it's history making, and I, I know some great things are going to happen. Mm. Ron, all right, how did the ark get there? I mean, it seems to me that everybody thought it was lost for centuries. And nobody, you know, I'm, surely if the Israelis knew where that thing was, they'd have it out and have it in a temple, mm -hmm. you know, to me. Built that's one for it. That's what yeah. I would think. Yeah. Because, you know, when it was out and the Israelis did have it, they used that as part, part of their worship in, in the temple of God. And, mm -hmm. and uh, so how did, it, how did it get there in its location? All right. Uh, when Nebuchadnezzar came down and uh, threw up a siege wall around the city and was starving them out, God told Jeremiah that the city would be destroyed. And Jeremiah shared this with the people. He said, if you humble yourself, I told the king this, mm -hmm. and go out and humble yourself to the king of Babylon, God will preserve you. You will not be destroyed. But he wouldn't do that. And so anyway, uh, Jeremiah took this ark, uh, or had some friends do it. I believe he was actually in the courtyard of the prison down in a pit at the time the hiding took place. But he had this done, and it was hidden in the grotto where he lived, and we found charcoal and stuff like that. It's probably a part of Jeremiah's fire. But uh, hmm. so this, uh, at the time, okay, at, at the time, the the Israel, uh, the city of Jerusalem was under siege, and there was a wall around it. Right. Okay. So at that time, then the location they hid it would have been within the city. It would have had to been the within the city or an area right outside the city that they could get to without being seen from the wall. And this wall was back out of range of the catapults. Okay. Okay. And so... So the uh, enemy is they would fire upon them with catapults. It wouldn't, it wouldn't harm right, them. Right. They'd fall How short. long were they under siege? Do you remember? Uh, they... It was close to three years, I think. It was quite a long time. I know the people up on Masada were under siege for about three years. But anyway, this was hidden. And uh, there's a list in Second Kings of everything that Nebuchadnezzar carried away. And then later on, uh, it was brought back. And mm -hmm. there's another list of that. Mm -hmm. I can't think of the minor prophet's name right now that uh, brought it back. But uh, those lists are there. So everything that was in the temple that's not on those lists is in this cave, uh, is what mm -hmm. it amounts to. All right, now then. Huh. Uh, this was hidden in this scarp 600 years before Christ died, okay? Now then, the Bible in Psalm 77, 13 says, Thy way, O God, is in the sanctuary, okay? Mm -hmm. Now, we all know that Christ was represented by the Lamb mm -hmm. that was slain. Mm -hmm. But on the Day of Atonement, when he was the sin bearer, he was represented by a goat. And that goat was killed, its blood was carried into the most holy place. The only furniture that was in there was the Ark of the Covenant with the cherubims, with the mercy seat on top, and the blood of Christ, as typified by the blood of this goat, was sprinkled on that mercy seat. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, I was impressed in praying about this that when Christ died, his was shed above the mercy seat. Mm. And when we found the cross hole, these cutouts, and the Ark of the Covenant, that is exactly what happened. Christ died and his blood was shed above the mercy seat. And his blood, and his blood as it um, fell to the ground under where he was crucified, it would go right down through the ground. There's earthquake that... cracks there. There's no, I could, somebody that I share this with privately said, is there any blood stains on there? I couldn't tell. You know, uh, I have taken photographs of things and go back and look at them uh, after they're developed and see stuff that my eye didn't see to start with. So there may be. Oh, okay, so you're talking. That. You're talking that the blood actually went through cracks. I in would the earth, not the earth, be at all cracks surprised. Cracks in the rocks yes. down yes. and right on the ark onto the mercy seat that was right below where he was hung. This uh, oh, appears man. to be this uh, situation. Now we know that there will be a tremendous appeal made to the Jewish nation or Jewish individuals before probation is closed. He says that he will seal 12,000. Now this might be a figurative number of each of the tribes, mm -hmm. but there is going to be a tremendous witness to these people that will impress them. 
And a lot of these people are turned off with Christians mm -hmm. for the reasons that they are turned off with Hitler. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, and there's people that haven't had those experiences that are turned off for other reasons. But God is going to turn everybody back on. Now, whether they stay on or not will be entirely up to them. But anyway, if well, we can go on... They just told us that the slide projector is out of commission. Oh, well, how about that? The slide Yeah, they blow a bulb on it or something. Well, I'll be. Uh, well, so, I don't know. Maybe the Lord, <laughs> maybe the Lord works in mysterious ways around here. You don't here. want this shown tonight, all right? <laughs> uh, I prayed about it. You know, I, I always ask Him to overrule everything that His purpose will be accomplished. See, if somebody is dying, and they come to me, well, if they've got a rope around their neck and they're strangling or something, and I've got a knife, you know, I can cut the rope. But if they're dying of something, I can't help them. Mm -hmm. I cannot. And when I see preachers and stuff on television programs doing things that exalt themselves, I mean, this is pathetic. Yeah. What can they do for a lost soul? What can they well, do, you know, for a person? We have to exalt, exalt Christ because he can do things for these people and we cannot. Well, I think... <laughs> it's fixed. It's just fixed. <laughs> we fixed as it. We sit. All right. I, it looks like we're going to get to see it after all. All right. Okay, let's continue with the slide then. Please. Next slide. Okay. Okay. All right. Now, what we're doing here, we're going into the chamber. And if you'll just kind of progress along here, we're still in the chamber. Now, this shot right here looks like a big blur. But we put this, uh, hold it just a second on the last shot. Well, that's all right. Don't back up. Uh, this is where we leave. Mm -hmm. But there is no light in that box. We did this through an optical thing uh, and took a picture in there. And the thing was so bright that it just obliterated the picture. The in slide. what box now in the stone? In the box where the Ark of the Covenant is. So you, you put an optical instrument we inside the box. We made a small hole through there, put an optical instrument in that is used to do bronchoscopies on patients and, and uh, colonoscopies and things like this. It's a fiber optic instrument. And uh, so when I took this picture, there was some brightness showed up on this slide that wasn't artificial. And oh, so I goodness. could not get a picture of what was in there. Every time it was just wiped out by this brightness. Mm. So there's a, there's a bright light inside There's something in there that... that Canceled oh, out more or less. Can, right. I could not get a shot. Now, there's probably people that could, but I thought I tried hard. You bored through the concrete then, the concrete not box. Not the concrete, it's stone. Stone, I'm sorry, right. the stone box. Yeah. Now, did light come out of the hole of the stone? When you no, no, it? no. There's no light came out. <laughs> so whatever it is, it's something that I couldn't. How big see. a hole was it? Uh, it those. Uh, I think it was about a five eighths inch uh, uh -huh. drill, uh, right at that. And how deep was it? How, how deep thick is uh, the thing? The thing is, uh, is about three inches thick. Now, being a real smart cookie here, I didn't measure how deep it was. <laughs> And I was too excited at the time. Oh, I bet. <laughs> but I, the bit I bought was about like this, and it went through. Mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. It went, uh, went through there. So anyway, the Ark of the Covenant is in that box. Okay. And now you, know then, that, you know that I, I without a shadow. I will my no life doubt. on it. And, uh, and you're the only one who knows where it's at? No. His son. Jim Irwin knows where it is. My sons know where it is. There's one... Israeli official knows where it is. Why would, what would keep them from going in there and getting it? Uh, we probably should not get into the reasons, but it has to do with political situation. And it would seem to me that if the if the ark is revealed, well, then there are hardcore. I'll say hardcore, but I mean, yeah. Um, what's the word I'm looking for? Fanatical people. It's what some people call fanatical Israelis right. that would say, okay, we're going to go over here and the Mosque of Omar is gone and the temple is going to be you built. You got it. You got it. I see. The Mosque of Omar would get blown up. There, This thing has to be done properly. Now, if you're going as a missionary to Africa, you could just run right out in a village of headhunters and say that uh, uh, I'm a Christian and I'm here to convert all you people. Right. Well, you'd probably be in the stew pot pretty quick. So there's <laughs> ways of doing things. Right. Yeah. And the, there is a 
scenario afoot that will get this out with, uh, without causing all of this, we hope. You know, Is you the scenario taking that. place right now? Yes. Events that are it has happening been right now. since we found it. Yes. So do we have more slides we need to look at? Uh, yes. This will take us right back out uh, through the way we came, and my son was sitting down there guarding the door so nobody could come in. We had a few uninvited guests. All right, now this is a shot of the Garden of Gethsemane. This is where Christ, you know, went through his mental agony and made the decision to go through this for us. He did not have to. He made that decision right there uh, in that garden. You know, the thing right. about that, why you, why you mentioned yep. the thing that always gripped me about the Garden of Gethsemane and Christ going through that mental anguish, yep. uh, you know, not only the fact that he was going to be crucified and tortured, and die like that, but will God raise me from the dead? He right. had to have That's faith. That's the thing. He, Jesus had to have faith that God, his Father, our Father, would raise him from the dead. And yeah. that's, a, that's a pretty awesome thing. I mean, would you be willing to give your life down tomorrow on the thought that God was going to raise you from the dead? You know, that's, yeah, that's uh, a Yeah, there a mighty... was a time that I would not have done that, but now uh, I would if God gave me that ability. I'd be willing. I wouldn't be able. It takes because to stand up there and face a gun, unless the power of choice is out of your hands, yeah. is beyond most human ability, or at least it's beyond mine. Yeah. Well, they say we only have three minutes. Are we finished with the slides? No, we've got another oh, one here. We okay, <laughs> let's roll the slides on then, because there's some I want to show you. Uh, just keep going. We'll pass this one, these two up. All right, this one here. Now, the cutouts there, we painted or drew Jesus of Nazareth, King of the Jews, in the Roman and the Greek and the Hebrew languages, mm -hmm. and we put them there, and we uh, set this up to uh, resemble what happened to Christ on the cross, okay? Mm -hmm. Now, the cross hole is actually right straight down below where we set this thing up. Mm -hmm. And so Christ, 600 years after uh, the Ark of the Covenant was hid, died right above the, the mercy mm. seat, and his blood was shed on it. Okay? Mm. Now, this is spectacular. Mm. Uh, the Jewish oh, people yeah. are familiar with the sacrificial system, and what this represents is his blood wipes out our guilt that we have accrued by breaking this law that God wrote with his own finger. Mm. Okay? Mm -hmm. Now, if you'll go on right quickly here, we'll get... Uh, a couple more slides in. Next slide. There we go. All right, this is a, another shot of the same thing. Keep going. Okay. All right, now this is a beautiful garden, uh, part of the garden there, mm -hmm. uh, of the garden tomb. And our lives before Christ did this for us, I guarantee, was extremely bleak. You know, Paul made the statement yeah. that if Christ has not died for us, and if we have not been redeemed by the blood of Christ, then are we hopeless indeed. Yeah. And there are, there's no language or no words or phrases or anything that I could use that would impress this upon people, but God's Holy Spirit can impress it yeah. upon their hearts. And I'll guarantee you tonight we have looked at the mechanics of the saving of the entire human race, those that are willing to cooperate with God. And yeah. not only that, but the settling of the question as to whether God's way was right, as he said, or whether it was wrong, as Satan claimed. Mm -hmm. All of this took place right outside that north wall. Now, this here is a shot of graves that we're accustomed to seeing when we go excavating. They're mm -hmm. full of bones and mm -hmm. artifacts, but the one that Christ was in is empty. Yeah. Was that, is that all the slides now? Uh, that, yes. That's, that's the last slide. Uh, well, I tell you, that it, what you say is, is almost too much to comprehend. I mean, when I think about it, all I can go is, uh. <laughs> it doesn't make me sound very intelligent, but the thought that uh, yeah, it, just the story and these slides and, and the things you're telling just brings it all alive, all alive, the story of Jesus and how he gave right. his life for us. And the fact that he gave his life, and right underneath it was the mercy seat of God. Mm -hmm. right. Is it's just mind-boggling? Right. How how God's perfection fits into place, and uh, I just hope that you at home, as you watch this program, we're out of time. 
But I just hope that as you watch this program that you, you, you got the message that we're putting across yes. here. And, you know, if you don't have Christ in your life, ask Him to come into your heart. You know, go to church this Sunday and, and renew your relationship with God. And um, we, we just love you very much. And it's, I guess that's it for tonight. Yeah, we got to thank time. Ron real quick. Thank you, Ron, for being with us. We you're, appreciate you're it. You're most welcome. We're going to have you back and talk some more about okay. this, too. And Christ is alive today presenting his blood to his Father in heaven and saying, forgive them and accept my blood yes. in yes, their place. Is. Yes. That's all we have for tonight. The yes, Lord's coming. Maranatha. Maranatha. Maranatha.